Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Prophet, your event and productivity therapist, coming to you from the heart of Music City in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the event industry, what we have learned from them, and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Today, I'm joined by the best communications and event consultant in the business, Allison Burry. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for having me, Angela. I'm very excited to share some of our past experiences together. We've definitely been through some unique situations over the years. What are we discussing today? Well, today we're going to talk about staffing and staffing appropriately for your events. For example, if your client is providing a bunch of props, making sure that you have the right equipment, and then this particular event that we're going to talk about today had a flip, and we're going to discuss what that means. Well, tell us the story. What happened? Of course. So the first thing I'll say is this client... They had a lot of unique ideas. This was really back when Pinterest started to become a big thing where a lot of brides started using it for all these great ideas. So this client wanted us to hang all of these mirrors and frames and pictures on this really fun texture wall at the venue. And the venue was fine with it. They just said we couldn't hang the pictures directly on the wall. But... It's kind of in a warehousey loft type setting and the top of the wall was exposed and so we could hammer nails into the top and hang the pictures off like with fishing line so it looked like they were actually hanging on the wall which was totally fine you know I made a list to make sure that the client literally provided everything and if the client didn't have it of course we would provide it but some of the stuff If we had to go and buy it, like, I just, I'm not the girl that has hammer and nails and fishing line, like, laying around all the time. But I made a very detailed list for the client, and they brought us exactly what we needed. The hammer, the nails, the fishing line, all the way down to the fishing line being able to hold a certain weight. Because there's fishing line that can hold up to a pound, and then there's thicker fishing line that can hold up to 40 or 50 pounds. So we had different spools of fish in line, and you really had to pay attention to what you were doing. And in my opinion, it was for safety purposes, it was really like a three-person job because we had one person down on the floor telling us if it was straight. So we used that level app on the iPhone that tells you if the picture's straight. And then we had another person that was hammering and nailing and another person that was threading the the fishing line through the mirrors and and through the pictures and like this is not a fast task um I think that we were up there for hours hanging things which was totally fine it's just there were a lot of other things that needed to be done like the normal stuff that we do like putting the linens on and steaming the linens and making sure that the seams are all the same way and you know all the tables have to go down and all the linens have to go down before the chairs can go down and so We started on some of the prop stuff first, which set some of our other team members behind, like, for example, putting chairs down. But in this situation, it was okay because this was a flip. And so we had the ceremony where the reception dinner was actually going to take place later. And so we had the drapery company hang drape, and we were very strategic in where things were happening and where things were going. Um... And so I will say that I wish that I had two or three more people. And at the time, my assistant, who was my right hand, she was still a little new in the job. And she she was a single mom with a two-year-old. And I believe she couldn't come that day because she couldn't find a babysitter. And so, you know, what am I supposed to do? Say, oh, I'll find you one? Well, not exactly. 
And so we were down one person because of that, which, you know, gets a little irritating when you're short on time. And so that was one issue. And as we're all hanging things and talking, like there was one point that the groom walked in and um, he's, he looked up and he's like, what are you guys doing up there? I'm like, we're hanging all your stuff. Like, this is what it takes. And he was like in disbelief that the girls that he was in meetings with who were like in dresses and heels were in tennis shoes and yoga pants up on top of a, a ceiling and a wall, like hanging their stuff. And in my head, I'm thinking, well, like, who the heck do you think is going to do it? Um and we pride ourselves on being so OCD and making things so perfect that I don't always trust anybody else to just get the job done. So anyway, as we're talking and hanging, you know, we're chit-chatting a little bit. And at the time, we had two interns, and they were telling us about their week. And, you know, I'm always asking them, like, what did you learn this week? And what did you work on this week? Because I don't see them every day. And some of the things they were telling me in my head, I'm thinking, well, you really shouldn't be working on that. You're an intern. You should not be calling new clients. That's something that my assistant should be doing. And in fact, I'd already run into this with her before where I had a previous intern telling me some things that she was asking them to do that they shouldn't have been doing. And so my blood pressure is boiling at this point that I'm finding out that she's still having interns do things that she shouldn't be having them do. And so they kept talking and talking, and I kept learning more and more. And I'm just like, okay, this is the icing on the cake. Like, I got to get down and, like, email my attorney and, like, fire this person because I just can't take it anymore. And so instead of, like, just staying in the moment and not being reactive, I get down um, from hanging things, which set us back even more, and it's like, you know, when you have something in your head and like you just have to get it out or you're like going to forget. So I got down, I like typed an email out to figure out like how I should handle this because in the state of Tennessee, you just can't fire somebody. Like you actually have to have documentation. And I've actually never had to fire anybody before, but I was so livid and upset about how she was handling the company that I have worked so hard and put my whole life and my whole effort and my whole heart into building and then the way that she was just passing it off to people who had no clue and and again they were brand new and so a takeaway from that was just like to try to stay in the moment I should have made a note on my phone and I should have dealt with that later and so again it put us a little bit behind um, but we finished the project we finished setting up for the ceremony I will say that um you know, it's it's a little bit nerve-wracking when the ceremony and the reception is at the same place and the client is getting ready on property and they're seeing things. This time it wasn't the bride that kept coming out, but her family got there very early, um, mainly for pictures. And logistically, we should have had them come in a side door and go upstairs where they were not in the middle of scene set up. So people were coming in, they were taking pictures, they were making comments like, are you all going to be done with this before the ceremony or reception starts? And for those of you who've been in the industry for a while, you know, like in the last 45 minutes, like most of us in this industry, we work very well under pressure. And of course, we'll get it done. But in a very nice way, I had to smile and say, it's not safe for you to be around here. Please go upstairs. Stop taking pictures. We're not ready yet. And yes, we'll be done with it. And you can only say that so many times before you just want to scream it. And so that's something that in the future, I'll definitely not allow people to come in there. In fact, I'll probably hire a security guard or someone to stand out front because I've also learned in my experience that signs don't work because people don't read and they don't pay attention. They just see something pretty and they walk in and they want to grab a picture of it, um, which really can, again, not be safe. We have ladders around. We have open boxes everywhere. There's water on the floor from the floral designer putting flowers out. So really being aware of that is super, super important. And of course, we did get it all done on time and it was fine. But, I mean, Allison, this is, I think, your first flip that you, that you ever did with us from, like, flipping from the ceremony to the reception where we had, like, I think 40 minutes. 
So what was your takeaway from that part that day? Um, I definitely learned how important it is for everyone to be on the same page and for everyone to have a specific task. Um, Just having, you know, there's like 20 or 30 people that come in to help because there's so much that has to get done within one hour of time. And it's more like 45 minutes of time because you have to leave some extra cushion in there for the bride and groom to see it before everybody comes in and for photo and video to come and capture it before it's ready. So just being in communication with everybody and giving everybody a task to complete and one thing that they're responsible for during the flip really helps so there's no confusion and everybody just goes in, does their part and gets out of the way so the rest of us can finish. Um, But Angela, what would you say your biggest takeaway was from everything that happened that day? Well, just to touch on your point again about communication, um, it's really key, especially when you have a flip. It's, it's like the, that saying, the domino effect. So, you know, team one, they come in, they move the chairs. Team two, they're bringing in the tables. And a lot of times we'll put pipe and drape up to stage things on the other side, which is what we did in this instance. We actually put all the tables in order. So it, there was a strategy. So there were table numbers. And so tables, you know, one, two, three, four, five that were going to the front were obviously in the front of the stage. So even when you have what looks like a mess in behind the drape is actually an organized mess because there is a rhyme and a reason to setting up the dinner portion. And so as soon as all the chairs are moved, then the, the table team brings all the tables out Everybody has the floor plan. We've already talked about the floor plan, so they know where it's going. Um, We oftentimes do different floor plans in every single venue that we work in, and so there's always challenges. Um, But that's what is fun about our job and about the design, and each client is unique. Um, And then usually we try to have the linens that are already on the tables. They're already steamed. Sometimes, depending on the the design and the flowers and the chargers and the napkins, we many times will already have all that set. So in this circumstance, you know, the chargers were down, all of the napkins were folded. We had a very unique design with this setup. And so different tablescapes had different napkin folds. They had different menu cards, different place cards. Um, So again, doing all that ahead of time really, really helped out on that flip. Um, I even remember a guest that was being nosy who came downstairs and like wanted to see everything. And they actually like stepped on the drape because it wasn't ready. It wasn't ready for people to come down. It wasn't zip tied back or held down yet with the sand socks that we use and it actually fell over. And at that point, the drape team had already finished their part. And so I had to call them and ask them to come back to fix it real quick because they were the only ones with the ladders that could reach the top of that drape in the pipe and base. So you always have to be ready for unexpected things like that. But every second matters when you're doing a flip. And it looks like chaos, but it's, again, very organized chaos when you have teams working on specific things. Um, and then the catering team that we work with quite often, they were awesome in making sure that every table had the right amount of chairs put back at each table because, again, with it being a seating chart and a seated dinner and everybody, I think they had three or four menu options, which can complicate things and take service a little bit longer. Um, but it's not like you just shove 10 chairs at a table. We actually had different chairs that went with different tablescapes that had different linens. And so a lot of that took a whole day of prepping the staff weeks before the wedding. And so again, like to your point, Allison, communication, I would say for me is the biggest takeaway is you've got to plan, you've got to prep ahead of time, you've got to make sure everyone's on the same page. And, um, you know, I'll go off on a tangent here just real quick when brides call us and say, do you do day of planning or day of coordinating? I'm like, that doesn't exist in our world. Like the clients that come to us, they appreciate the detail and it takes a lot of communication and having people in charge of that communication. So the bride or the groom or the couple or the mother, the bride, they don't have to 
answer like 45 questions coming at them from all the different vendors. So to wrap it up, one word, communication. <laughs> awesome. Well, can you share with our listeners some of the products and different resources that you have available to help wedding and event planners? Sure. So you can always visit our blog, which you can get to from our website, AngelaProfit.com. There's always great resources and articles available there to help other business owners. Also, be sure to sign up for email updates for tips and resources to be emailed to your inbox that we only share with people who are signed up for those. We also have free webinars with various subjects that we do. We also have some live events coming up. So be sure to watch social media and all the information on our website to check those out. Awesome. Well, Angela, thank you so much for sharing all of your valuable advice with us today. I can't wait for next week so we can share some more of our incredible experiences together. Thank you, Allison, for joining me. And thank you so much to our listeners for joining us today on Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design. Be sure to tune in next week, like Allison said, to learn more from our past experiences. And if you found this podcast helpful, please share it with other wedding and event professionals. And also be sure to subscribe today so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. I'm so passionate about helping other event professionals. And with my background in psychology, I appreciate that our best selves develop from real life situations that we're sharing with you guys. So thanks again so much for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for more great tips to grow your business. And if you have a question or unresolved issue that you would like guidance on, connect with us at AngelaProfit.com. For additional valuable resources, again, visit the website. And until next time, remember to stay productive, positive, and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, Head over to AngelaProfit.com.